welcome back to open and well it's autism acceptance month and what better way to celebrate than by shining a spotlight on autistic artists the autistic theater, ma theater makers excuse me alliance or ATA is a New York based coalition of autistic friendly theater companies dedicated to uplifting and supporting autistic individuals in the arts um, the ATA offers various forms of support to artists from grants to affinity events, providing community and connection in sensory friendly settings. And joining us to share more, we welcome the Autistic Theater Makers Alliance Executive Director, Margaret Hall. Hello Hi. and welcome. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you for being here. And um, one of the things I didn't mention mm -hmm. in the introduction is this wonderful term that I just learned about last week called neurodivergent. Mm -hmm. I love that. I like that phrase better. It's one of my favorites as well. Yeah. And so let's start with politically correct terms. Let's mm -hmm. start there, right? Because um, I just wonder, right? It's like, most people feel more comfortable using the terms on the spectrum, mm -hmm. uh, don't like being referenced as autistic. So let, let's talk a little bit about that. Of course. So everyone has a different experience of it. It's an identity and like any other identity, it's incredibly diverse. There are debates between like person first language versus diagnosed based language, but at the core, it's all about recognizing a person's individuality. I personally identify as an autistic individual I am an autistic person in the same way that I am a person who wears glasses and has brown curly hair. There are some people who prefer instead to be referred to as a person with autism because they don't choose to be defined by that status within their life. The reason why the neurodivergent label has become so incredibly popular in the last decade is because it truly is a spectrum. We have things in common with people with many different other mental conditions, be it OCD, be it sort of mental balance conditions, hormone work. Those all fall under the umbrella of neurodiversity. And it's essentially anything that, frankly, is, in my opinion, probably the majority at the end of the day. Right, right. What really is typical. Right. But the neurodiverse umbrella allows us to connect as a community because neurodiversity is an invisible disability very often and we it can be very difficult to access another person who is neurodiverse if you do not have that language it can feel very isolating and feel like you're the only person experiencing life in this way but the autistic community the neurodiverse community at large can be an incredibly holding and comforting place to really find community and support which is what this is about, mm -hmm. right? And so um, I love this, by the way, Autistic Theater Makers Alliance. Now, again, we just kind of went through a quick summary mm -hmm. of the spectrum, yeah. right? And also identity and um, intersectionality mm -hmm. uh, and also just embracing each other's differences, yeah. right? In a way that we're not offending, mm -hmm. right? Um, right now, I think our world is really dissecting like all of the different identities in which we want to be addressed as. And I think it's a beautiful thing, mm -hmm. but it could be a little overwhelming at the same time. So when a person steps into this environment, what, what, what should they expect to, to experience? People. Nice. The biggest thing that I always find myself underlining is that we are not the stereotype that people think autism is. For a very, very long time in the media, there was a very specific version of autism that was presented as the only acceptable or palatable form to be depicted. Think about something like Rain Man. I know hundreds of thousands of autistic individuals. There's only like two that I would say fall within that particular classification of savant syndrome. You know autistic people in your life. They might not even know they're autistic. It is yeah, I was going to say yeah. that, too. I was going to say that because there's a lot of uh, people that come under the identity of having IEPs, mm -hmm. right? But then there's different versions of IEPs, mm -hmm. right? And some of it is sound, yeah. um, processing. Mm -hmm. 
does all of that fall under the uh, category of being autistic? In many ways it does, yeah. yes. I also have something called sensory processing disorder, which is a comorbidity disorder, which essentially means that I feel things more sensitively than the average person does. For me, touch is by far my most sensitive. I had to go through a lot of sort of touch-based therapy and dulling down of my nerves when I was young to interact with the world. But that doesn't mean I don't love hugs. It just means that I need a certain kind of support in order to engage with that part of existence. And that's also why the terms high and low support needs have become incredibly popular. Because at the end of de the day, just saying someone's autistic doesn't actually tell you all that much about what they need. But if they tell you, hey, I really struggle with X, Y, Z, I'm a high support need in this particular avenue, is that really all that different than talking to any person you know and them saying, hey, I'm struggling with this, can you give me a hand? Right. And that really is all about accepting the fact that this is a part of the human existence. It's not an aberration. It's not a problem. None of us are broken. We just need a little help in certain areas to interact in the world. And we can also help neurotypical people interact with the world in ways that we do. Is there such a thing as neurotypical? <laughs> Truly, I question it sometimes. I mean, really. Yeah. So, um, and, and then there's theater, right? Mm -hmm. And theater for me serves as therapy. Yeah. So I'm just curious like tell me a little bit about the alliance and how you form uh, do you actually put up productions do you you cast them like uh, do you have a membership like how does it all work so we are not a membership based organization we do have members of our board that are like allied theater companies that is the alliance part of alliance but any autistic individuals are welcome to participate in the autistic theater makers alliance and reap support from our work while we are not currently staging productions, that is something that we are looking to do in sort of the next calendar year. However, we do support productions and lend support to bringing in audiences is the stage that we are at right now. We are a fairly young 501c3 nonprofit, mm -hmm. but we connected very closely with How to Dance in Ohio, a Broadway musical that was recently on stage here in New York at the Belasco Theater that starred seven autistic actors playing autistic roles, talking about Dr. Amigo in Columbus, Ohio, where I'm originally from, who is a wonderful mentor and guide for social skills training for autistic what, what children. Do you, how do you reference people from Ohio? An Ohioan? Ohioan, yeah. Oh, an Ohioan? You just came in like, I'm a proud Ohioan. Yeah. <laughs> That's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing. Of course, it's a beautiful no. And thing. I adore Dr. Amigo. I uh, sort of, I entered theater without his intervention. I first started doing this when I was like five or six. I was a performer before I became a writer, teacher, and historian. But Dr. Amigo has known me since I was a toddler. And it was incredibly full circle when this show happened and supporting these actors because technically this is the first time that autistic actors have openly performed on Broadway, but it is absolutely not the first time it has happened. It just is not publicly acknowledged. Got it. And so How to Dance in Ohio was a real watershed moment for the community of saying we're here and we're not going to be quiet about it anymore because there is incredible pressure to not talk about your neurodiverse status because it makes people often think less of you and think you aren't capable of something. Right, right. I am nothing if not stubborn. Right. <laughs> and I was really driven to found the ATA and to work with the different organizations that we work with to really bust open that door and say, no, you can talk about it. In the same way that I don't have to hide that I wear glasses, right. I do not have to hide that, hey, if I say, just don't touch me today, I'm having a rough day, don't touch me. Right. If I see the world in a different way, that's a benefit. As an artist, the fact that I see things from a different lens, I think of it as very vibrantly compared yes. to the way that I talk to other people. I see things in a very high saturation. That means that I see things and I experience things in a way that is valuable to other people. There's no such thing as, oh, well, now you know I'm autistic, so I'm doing this in an autistic way. Right. Everything I do is autistic right. because I am autistic. Got it. And with the ATA, the support that we give to help people find it's this like community. It's like an empowerment. I'm like, I'm empowered. I'm like, yeah. yes, 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 it's all the way. <laughs> truly, it's a huge thing because I cannot tell you the number of children I have known from youth up to people that I know in their 70s and 80s who have been in this industry for decades who are terrified to publicly acknowledge that this is the state. I'm not going to out anyone here on this right. show, of no, course. No, right. But people that like every single person in this room, every single person watching, they know them and they know their work. Right. They are deathly afraid 
God. to acknowledge that this is a part of their life because of the stigma that's attached. All right. And breaking down that stigma is so key. Yeah, and I, I see you're really passionate mm -hmm. about it. And you know what? We're so grateful that you brought it here. Of course. Uh, but before we run out of yeah. time, I want to know exactly how and how you service these mm -hmm. individuals because I want I want clarity on that, yes, right? Of because course. you're a theater line, so uh, I'm curious to know like do, it has to be theater related, is it music related, is it anything that's presented on stage? How does that work? We are theater related. Okay. And we support our groups in a variety of ways, including grants, which helps individuals fund their training really take that next step within their own work. We also host affinity nights with different productions, including How to Dance in Ohio, which welcomes autistic individuals into the theater to experience art in areas that they might not have felt welcome beforehand. We also provide support to our allied theater companies because many of them, action play, epic players, are really putting on these productions and performances with autistic actors specifically. And so supporting them, helping them connect with a new group of people, it's really all about connecting the community and not letting it be so disparate. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you for bringing here, Margaret. Thank all you right. for having us. Go ahead with your best though. <laughs> Margaret Hall, everybody, I love it. I love everything you shared. Thank, Thank you. you for bringing it here. Once again, the Autistic Theater Makers Alliance Executive Director, Margaret Hall. And for you guys, for more information on the Autistic Theater Alliance, you can visit autistictheatermakers.org and be sure to follow them on Instagram at autistictheatermakers. All right, stay tuned. There's more open when we return.